Hello and welcome to a demo of the Wound Sim 2022 release. Um, what you'll find is uh, it's similar to the previous versions, uh, except the, the main improvements are layer by layer controls in the GUI and doilies. Uh, there are some other minor things um, in there, uh, which we'll go over. Uh, and then from the translator perspective, the, the main difference is the support for Abacus Explicit and uh, uh, the support for automated me meshing. Uh, so we'll, we'll really touch on the automated meshing part. Um, the, the use of explicit is, is just a single button, so it's really probably not worth going over. Um, but anyway, so let's start off and let's just say we're gonna start building a model from scratch. Now, um, if you're familiar with the wound sim GUI, we start off by defining the mandrel and the materials, and then we do our layup here. So uh, things are very similar to the previous version, except we have this extra table here that has layer by layer controls. All right, so again, to do the mandrel, we could come in here and if we want to do analytic shapes, a geodesic or elliptical, we could do that. Typically, you're going to have an existing liner and we'll uh, define the contour on the exterior of that liner. So what we'll do is we'll um, do that from Abacus CAE, from the Abacus CAE translator. All right, so this is Abacus CAE, so this is our model got a couple of parts here um, it's not very realistic but you know, it's just kind of a testing that you know for like the type 4 tanks that have multiple parts here in the polar boss um, we just want to test to make sure that works fine so um, from the translator again this from plugins we go to wound sim translator once we've installed it and we have a bunch of options up here the first one here is for defining the liner output so I'm just going to say test, model dimensions, axis symmetric, it automatically reads the, the existing liner. Um, so we're going to do half a tank. So the way we're going to output these points is we're going to pick on a node set. Now the node set can be based on geometry or nodes. So we'll highlight this and we'll see that this is actually based on geometry. So what we'll do is click this and this will just highlight all the nodes. Um, now we can, at this point, we have enough information, we can just hit OK and we're done, and we can export those uh, points over to the Wound Sim GUI. Now the only issue with that is you have a lot of points in here, and it tends to slow down the sketching. So just imagine when we sketch, when we compute the, you know, the, the outer shape of each layer, that's done by computing the normals at each one of these points and then drawing a bunch of lines so the more points, the slower it's going to be. So, so typically if it's less than 50 layers um, and we only had, like in this case, 400 points, it probably it doesn't slow things down much. But if we're going to get up into the you know, 75 to 100, 120 layer models, those will slow down quite a bit if you're, if, if you're saving a lot of points like this. So what I want to do is just remove some of those points. So I'm going to use for, these are deactivating points in the cylinder. And we hit it, and all it really does is it just deactivates every other point. So I'm going to get it down to about 66 here. All right, and then we'll do the same thing with the liner. So we get down to about 54 here. Now in this area, I probably don't want to be so coarse because we have this large curvature change. So what I'm going to do is go through here. If I look at the radius, these are all constant until we come down here. So I'm going to just find where the radius starts to change, and it's about here. So I'll turn on every other one. I'll just turn on these manually. All right, so we can see we put more points. If I want to, I keep doing more, but I think that's fine. All right, so I'll hit OK, and all this really does is it writes a CSV file that we can import. Okay, and then we could do the same thing with exporting our materials. T700, T1000. All right, so let's go back to the Wound Sim GUI. All right, so let's import our... our liner file. And there's our liner. And we can import our materials. All 
I'm going to delete the default one here. Okay, so we've got our materials and we're ready to start building a, a model. So we'll start with the helical, we'll say 15 degrees. Uh, this is in millimeters, so the thickness we'll just set it to one millimeter. It's a little bit thick, but that's right. Um, our bandwidth is down here. So you notice I'm on layer one, and you'll notice our layer attributes, you'll see this number one, and that just shows um, which layer number we're on. So I could sketch this. So as you'll notice, you know, we, we have the the layer one here, layer one here, we've drawn it, and now we've got our uniform thickness along the cylinder, and we've got it building up. So everything looks uh, similar to what you might have seen in the previous version, except now we have some controls that we can affect on a layer by layer basis. So previously we could change the end cap factor on the layer, but but the the inch shape was was a global parameter. So now we can do something like, let's just call it straight. So if we, in some cases, when we're coming up in the polar boss, we actually want straight in caps. It just makes it a little bit smoother. Um, here, we're not quite at the polar boss yet. So if I want to drop this back a little bit. So the end cap factor. So what that is, is this is using the constant um, or the conservation of volume calculations for the thickness. And then at some point it tapers down to zero. And at this point, we define this by the bandwidth times the end cap factor. So that would be 10 times 1.25. So if we march down here a distance of 12.5, we'll end up about here and that'll define where that point is. So all we're doing here is just scaling that back and forth if we want to to make it more flat or less flat. Okay. So we'll start off with just a simple, by default, it's a geodesic um, path. All right, so I'm going to next do a hoop. And we'll just call that 90. All right. And hoop's a little bit different. We have to define where it terminates. So. The position is from zero, which is at the center of the tank. In this case, we're doing a half tank model. Uh, and then we just measure the distance along here. So let's just put it around 270. We'll let it go well over the, over the dome. All right. Okay, now if you notice, this is pretty long and thin. So let's just, uh, we'll, sit, we'll kind of flatten that or, or make that a little bit more squat. All right, so there's our first hoop. So now we'll add another helical. Okay, and then this one will get all the way up into the polar boss. Okay, and we'll say geodesic. And, and you'll notice when I added uh, the new one, my cursor was at the bottom, so it inherited uh, the controls from wherever my cursor was, and then I'm just updating them to, to something more appropriate. Okay, so let's see what I did there. Now, the wind angle of 12, based on the radius out here, and that wind angle for a geodesic path, it's going to be turning around right around where this is at. Okay. Now we can do a couple of things to flatten this out. You know, if, again, just backing off our end cap is one. Okay. So, and then if we want to just kind of straighten it out, I can use a straight end cap for that particular layer. Um, and then you know we could we can continue to back this out a little bit if we want it. It's so the, so now with the new version we have the option of of uh, modifying the end cap um, for each layer uh, as well as the end cap factor. Okay, so let's go to add another hoop. Oops. All right. 
again 90. So we'll back that out to 60. And there's our next hoop. Okay, so let's add another helical. Okay, we'll back this one off to, let's say, about 25 degrees. And here we can um, change now by not just x coordinate, but by radius. So if if we're we were doing geodesic it would and and with a wind angle of 25 it would compute exactly where it turns around but now if we specify the radius what it'll do is it'll force a 25 degree helical to turn around at whatever radius uh, we're asking which is in this case we'll say um, a radius of around 41. Okay, and then we might want to flatten that out a little bit. Okay, and then let's just uh, go back and add another hoop. And let's change that by coordinate and we'll drop it back to 50. We'll make it like some of the others. Okay, so we're stepping back very nicely. Okay, we'll do one more helical just so I can demonstrate another way of terminating the layer. So we'll call this 12 degrees. And in this one, we'll enter it again by X coordinate, kind of like a hoop, except we're going to go all the way to the polar boss. So, you know, we might put in, in this case, we're putting in this coordinate here. So we might say 364, let's just call it. All right. So let's see if we can understand what this is doing. So it's coming over here, bridging over this, and it's building up its thickness. And finally, based on this number, which is pretty small, you see we're using a 0.75, it's going a distance of 0.75 times 10 along here, and then it stops, and then it's just doing kind of like a rounded end cap. All right. Um, so if we want to smooth this out, well, we could do that a few ways. First of all, if assuming that we've measured how the thickness builds up, and we do think this is exactly where the thickness builds up, we probably just want to run a straight line out here. So all we have to do is make this a lot bigger. And I would just keep this as straight. All right, so maybe a little bit bigger. So something like that. I'm, I'm sure it might be a little bit less than that. but So that would be based on whether you've measured uh, the exact buildup. So you can really control exactly how your model is going to build up. Um, all right, so let's just add one more layer, and this is off. These are often done for for various ways of adding stiffness up into the polar boss. Um, sometimes they're used for like uh, rubber shear plies. But what we're going to do is add a doily. All right, and we're going to do this by radius. So let's just say a doily is just like a, a something like the shape of a washer um, where it has an inner and an outer diameter so let's just give the outer diameters inner diameters 40 and 65. all right now the thickness now these we get we've given a thickness of one millimeter but they've built up as they've come into the polar boss so maybe um the thickness on this we want to, to bump up a little bit. It depends on, you know, these are usually like modif um, simulating 
like direct fiber placement where you're putting them kind of in a pattern of X's and building it up a little bit. Up the bandwidth. Okay, I'm just gonna reduce the bandwidth. Uh, let's see, bandwidth is probably 2.5 is probably a little bit more reasonable. Okay, the bandwidth was too large to draw these end caps. All right, so we can change these end caps to round it if we want. Okay, so we can just see it's kind of following along here. We can make this as big as we want. Uh, so we can actually have these run all the way down into the cylinder if we want. So anyways, I just wanted to demonstrate, you know, how we would do some, like a, doily type of stiffening uh, uh, layer all right so let's let's just say we're happy with our design I'm going to save this okay now I'm gonna we could do this a, a couple of ways when it comes to actually building the model in abacus and then running it so first of all we have all the controls that we need in here all the finite element model controls. So if we want to do, you know, define all of how we're, we're building up the model, we can do that. Um, and then we can say, well, I'm going to run the job from here. We can bring up CAE or just hide it, hide it in the background. Um, and then if we have an existing model, like the one that we already have open here, this is demo.cae, we could put that here. Or we can just go to the GUI and read what we just created. All right, so let's go here. We can go to the translator GUI and say, okay, I'm going to create a model. It's model one. All right, I'll just keep it empty. I'm going to import what we just created as model one. There's our doily, our hoops, and everything. And I'm going to do axisymmetric. Now, if you'll notice, when I did that one, um, operation here on the liner it told me point a just references where the how the liner should be translated so that they uh, are at the same y position all right so we'll stick with continuum so if we wanted to do dyna uh, explicit dynamics this is all we have to do um, the step definitions are a little bit different for explicit um, but pretty much everything else is the same All right, so let's the color coding. Let me just, um, let's see, that's uh, not bad. Okay, so here's our geometry that gets created. Okay, so you'll, if you'll notice, we have these end caps, have some partitions in here. Here's our hoops. All right. All right, so we haven't meshed anything, so let's, Let's start off by meshing by just using auto mesh. We'll just see how it does. Okay. Let's just recolor this. All right. So the fault for auto meshing is two elements through the thickness. So what it does is it tries to estimate uh, the, the aspect ratio down here such that it's roughly one by one up here. So if you look at this, it filled in all of these. So it said default through the thickness in the hoops and helicals and number of elements along the dome and the cylinder. Now, the other thing that it did is down here, you'll notice we have very coarse mesh in the cylinder. Because, you know, when we plot our stresses along the cylinder, they're pretty much constant, except where we start to transition out here. Okay, now, if, if we actually do path plots of this, we'll see in here where we may still be seeing some variation. So maybe we want to have the coarser mesh a little bit further down. So what we could do is just use all of this. And instead of saying one, maybe we step this back. And what this is, let me just click on this. This is just a tool that says, Okay, this is our partition between the cylinder and the dome. And if I say partition setback of three, that means this is partition zero, one, two, and then one more. So it means the fine mesh would be all the way 
through here, partway into the cylinder where all these layers are terminating. So let's just rebuild it as, as with that number and see how the mesh varies. Okay, let me update my color coding. All right, so you'll see I moved it way down here now. So this is nice when you have, let's say, a you know a, a 10 meter long cylinder, and that's only you know half a meter in diameter. So you really want to coarsen up your mesh down here. Okay, so let's just say we're we're happy with this mesh. Now we'll go on to do the analysis. Uh, so I'll just say 20 degrees here. So we can highlight, make sure. So this is our pressure load. All right, that's going to be on the liner. All right, we'll just say 10 megapascals. Um, and then this is the interface between the liner and the composite. We got to select the surface on the on the liner. All right, so we're happy with that. All right, now we could just submit. Normally, I'd run on multiple CPUs, but this is going to run so fast it it uh, it won't really matter. Okay. All right. So my first. Uh, Sanity check is to always contour the wind angle, UVARM 1. So um, the UVARMs are user-defined variables. And um, when we calculate like the, the lamina stresses in the fiber direction or transverse, uh, we have to do, uh, do that through a user subroutine. And we store those, those output quantities in what we call UVARM variables. So if we want to just see what all these UVARM variables mean, we can just click on that. Say so UVARM1, wind angle, UVARM2 is the fiber strain in the, or yeah, the strain in the fiber direction and strain transverse and so on. Okay. Now, um, let's actually switch this over back to UVARM1. And then what we'll do is we'll do a path plot of the wind angles that along. All right, so here's our our path plots of the. Um, so you'll see a bunch of um, plots here, just right on top of each other at 90, and then our different wind angles. All right, so we could do the same thing with UVARM2. Again, this is fiber strain. And then if we want to smooth this out, uh, we can do that. I think it's a little jagged in here. So if we want, we can kind of smooth it out. This is just a smoothing tool in Abacus. Right. So there's our hoop strains and our, our other strains, and then our doily strain. All right. All right, so we have a lot of the similar tools. Um, another one we could do is volume change. Um, now we have to define a path, which that defines the volume of our tank. So we can use that same node set. So I put a tool in here. It's this tool right here, just to make it a little bit easier. You can do this in C Abacus CAE. It's just, uh, it's a little a bit more tedious. So I just wanted to make it a little bit easier. Okay. So there's our path, and we only have a single step, so this will just print out our undeformed uh, volume and our deformed volume, so we could see how our tank is growing based on our pressure. All right, and then um, the fail strain, uh, if we have um, failure measures, we can calculate the burst pressure. Um, we don't have that for that particular material I selected. All right, so we've basically gone through a quick pass at how we build it. So let's just say we want to 
we're, we're working on a design and we say, okay, into wound sim and make a design change like that. So what I would really need to do is open that model one back up. Replot it. So that's got all of the controls we had. All right. So then we will add a hoop here. Let's say, you know, 90 degrees again, thickness 1.0 by X coordinate. Uh, so we'll go to 40. All right, so there's our, our new hoop. Okay, so let, let's just say we're happy with that, that design change. So now I can do save. Now we can go back here and just say rerun, build it and rerun it. So we have already taken all these controls that we had, our mesh controls, we, we've modified them accordingly. We read them back into WoundSim GUI. Now the WoundSim GUI redrew things, wrote it back out. So we'll just rebuild the whole model and we'll be confident it's got all the controls that we want. Okay, so there's our updated results with our new exterior hoop layer. And if we want to go through the same post-processing, we can. Now, in this case, I've done the pull method. So if we want, we can come back into here and do the push method, which is we can um, just... Uh, run from the wound sim GUI and say, let's auto run. We can uh, show Abacus CAE. Let me just, act here. I'll just close this down. Just kind of demo how this works. All right. And our, uh, our source CAE file, if you remember that was demo.cae. All right. And then we'll just rebuild the model as is. So we're going to rebuild it, run it. We'll just use one CPU. All right, so you see the gears are moving. So we chose to display CAE, so it's just going to go through that same exact build process. So there we go. Okay. Just got to open that ODB up. And there's our new results. All right. So the point is we can, we can run Abacus through here. So once we built our model the first time, it may be faster. Um, if we just make a few changes, submit from here, and then if we choose to, we can say, all right, well, we also want to um, add some outputs. So if we want to look at the different UVARM quantities, UVARM2, we might say, you know, we're really interested in just the fiber strains. Um, we only have one step, you know, whatever layers, if we want to do all the layers. And then when we um, run it, it'll just pop up some XY plots. So the point is we can control Abacus either through here or um, through uh, the Abacus translator directly, whichever might be more convenient. All right, so that's a kind of a quick summary of, of the new version. So basically to highlight the, the main items in this new version, it's really the layer by layer controls. It gives us a lot of flexibility to build uh, 
our polar boss exactly like we want it. Um, we have all the flexibility that we'll need. And we've added the doilies, and then on the translator side, we've added support for explicit, and then mostly uh, that you'll use all the time would be auto meshing. So I hope this has been helpful. Uh, I appreciate your time.